Hey guys, the Network Work here. Hope you've been doing well. If you are a new viewer, welcome to the channel. I'm just a guy that really loves talking about networking and I do a lot of demonstrations on how to work on a marketing device. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm glad to see you again. And please feel free to leave a comment about things that you guys thought about the video or things you'd like me to see or address perhaps in the next video because this isn't going to just be this one video. I'm actually going to do a few videos covering BGP. But in this initial video, this is going to serve almost as an introduction as how BGP works, especially on a marketing device. But I want to lay it out. BGP is BGP. So if you can configure it on a Microtech, it's going to be quite easy or simple to also just convert that same knowledge and take it over to a different vendor like Cisco or Juniper because it is a protocol. It works the, exactly the same on any device. It's just how you tweak things might be a little bit different. So it might look different, but it's all the same thing. BGP is awesome. I love it. It's the one protocol that's actually responsible for what we've achieved with the internet. So I really think BGP is such a cool protocol. You might hear me think of this as the, the monarch protocol. So I might call it the king or the queen protocol. And it's really that in like amazing. It's really that cool. The things that you can do with BGP. And it's not limited to just how we've connected to the internet. There's other cool things you can do with BGP. And we will discuss it in the video as well. But I just want to make sure that you understand this is going to be foundational knowledge on how BGP functions. And I'm not going to try and confuse you with lots of big words and stuff. Um, I'll put links that you can go to to read up on certain things. But I'm going to try and make sure that BGP is it's quite easy to understand in the way that I want to explain it so that you can see how it actually works in real time. We'll also do a lab on it. And we're just going to have fun. Things that we might not be discussing in depth in this lab, which we'll do in other videos, is stuff like route filters um, or even using other specific functions for BGP, like uh, using it to span VRFs or whatnot. But what we're going to do is set up BGP on router OS version 7, which is going to be the default for most of the new videos coming out. Um, I'm also going to configure it on the new beta version or the test development build. And we'll also set up BGP on a router OS version 6 device just to show you how connectivity functions between a router 6 to a version 7 device. So there's no iffy or issues when we do that setup. All right, so this covers the intro. Um, I'll also put in timestamps in the video, so please skip to a timestamp if there's something that you specifically want to see or focus on, or if you think you know something already, then you can skip to a different chapter, so to speak. Um, so please use that. We'll just go into a quick presentation, then we'll talk about the topology, and then at the end of the video, I'll go over the lab and actually set everything up. So if you just want to see that, please skip to that portion, and let's have a good time. See you in the video. All right, so let's talk about the bridging gap protocol. <laughs> Obviously a joke. It is the border gateway protocol or BGP for short. It's an amazing protocol that we can use to do many different things. Now, what is BGP? I've got a little list here just to kind of help me <laughs> stress the points that I want to make. But first and foremost, BGP is a dynamic routing protocol. It's actually an exterior standardized protocol and what it's actually doing is it's supposed to learn routes from what we call a peer or you can advertise routes out to a peer so you can tell your peers what networks or prefixes currently exist on your autonomous system which is the next point that we're going to talk about is autonomous system number or asn now autonomous system think of this as a unique number that is assigned to you your network your entity, your organization. So what happens is with BGP, you would typically get an ASN that you can set on the BGP configuration to say uh, who you are, basically. And <laughs> we're going to talk a bit more about how ASNs are obtained and such. But basically, BGP uses these ASNs to build up a path across the network to figure out how to get to a specific destination. And this is where we're going to be talking about a path vector because BGP is known as a path vector protocol because it uses these ASM paths to get between different routers or different networks. 
Now, you've also got two different types of BGP, namely eBGP, which is what we mostly work with because it is mostly used as an exterior gateway protocol where we'll connect to another autonomous system, so another ASN, something that is not us. So that is called eBGP. However, you also get something that we can call iBGP, and iBGP also has its own uses, and effectively all that iBGP means is you're going to be connecting to a BGP peer, but it exists within the same autonomous system number, within the same ASN. So both BGPs have the same ASN number, and we typically use interior gateway like iBGP if we want to span specific services, if we want to do stuff like uh, VPLS or um, VXLAN stuff, even though Micritic doesn't really support it just yet, but you, you can do stuff like the VXLAN in the future. I think Micritic will uh, support it, but it's really there to run specific services like VRF spanning and maybe even as a CE-PE uh, type of routing requirement. But a lot of times people still just set up eBGP for that. But you have two different types. The only real difference how they work is eBGP means all routes are being sent and received between peers and iBGP routes, your routes will only be sent to an eBGP peer. So if you want your iBGP neighbors to receive your routes, you're going to have to form direct BGP links to them. Now this also introduces a new type of um, solution in the mix that I'll create a separate video on as well. Although I've discussed it before, it's called a route reflector, where all of the BGP peers can connect to a route reflector. And then this route reflector will then be able to advertise routes between all of the members in the same ASN. Because if you don't use a route reflector, each and every BGP router needs to have a direct link to each other to create a full mesh for the routes to be effective, to be working correctly. All right. So we can use it in various ways. Now, when I say that, I'm talking about we can use BGP to connect onto the internet. So the internet is a crazy place. It's a big place. It's sometimes the Wild West, but BGP is mainly being used to peer to the internet so that we can actually get internet access. And it's so crazy cool how BGP achieves everything. And I'll do a little demonstration as well, but I love it. BGP, we can also use to span certain services, which I just talked about, where you can do stuff like um, VPLS or VRF stuff. Uh, that, that's great for BGP. So you get stuff that you can call address families and using those specific address families, you can actually bring in specific services. And the last thing that a lot of people or ISPs actually tend to use BGP for as well is whenever they bring up a new site and the site has multiple links perhaps, or even a single link, you can configure BGP uh, to learn routes from your customer edge. And you can also use it to actually set up some form of redundancy because you can tweak your BGP route so that one route is preferred over the other one. And that way you can have some type of automated failover should a primary link go down. So that's actually very common practice as well in the ISP industry. Um, even though there's tons of ways to set up redundancy or failover, BGP is, is one of them that a lot of people do. And what BGP also does is it forms a connection to a peer. Now, I've briefly mentioned it, but what that means is your BG, your router will form a connection. So similar to OSPF, which forms a connection to a neighbor with BGP, we just call it a peer, but that is one to one. So that is between two routers, you will be forming that peer relationship. And then BGP will use stuff that we call update messages in order to send and receive routing information. Now, BGP also uses TCP as its transport uh, method. So it doesn't use like OSPF, there, there's some UDP stuff and whatnot. It's using TCP and it's running on port 179. So it's very important to make sure that if you're going to run BGP, that you're not somehow accidentally blocking port 179 on TCP, because that will cause some issues with your BGP actually connecting. BGP can also be tunneled. So you can run BGP over a like an IPsec tunnel or L2TP or whatnot, so that your neighbors can come up and then you can learn and exchange routing information. All right, let's go next. Next up is the BGP states. Now this is a wonderful state machine, but the main things that I want you to focus on whenever you're working with BGP is you want to make sure that your state gets into an established state because established means that your peers are actually connected with each other 
and that they are exchanging route information. So typically when you first configure a BGP peer, you'll set it up on your router and you'll see it will go into an idle state. And the reason that could be is many things because it hasn't actually have a way to connect to the remote, remote side yet because maybe your peer hasn't configured the BGP on their end yet. So make sure that, that when you're working with BGP, both ends are configured. And then once both ends are configured, then you can start using this flow chart thing to actually see where uh, what's happening. But in essence, you'll configure a new peer, it will go into an idle state. Once the other peer goes up and they can actually communicate with each other, it will start going into a connect state, which is fine. Then from connect, it will go into open sent. So open sent, it will actually look at, I think, open messages. So the BGP peers will send open messages to each other just to make sure that there is actually a session that's being formed. And then from that open send state, it will go into an open confirm state, which is where it will check for keep alive timers. And then if the keep alive timers match and the packets were received, then it will go into established state. But this process happens so quickly that typically you'll just see it go from idle to established. Like it, it's, it's really that fast. Um, but typically if you see it hanging in any of these other states, then this is where you know you need to start troubleshooting some issues because maybe you've got the port blocked maybe the autonomous systems aren't correctly configured because you didn't put in your partner's ASN correct or they put in your ASN incorrectly or the remote peer address is incorrect. There's really so many issues why BGP can stop working. It could like be in the wrong VRF. But the main thing that you wanna make sure is you just wanna get into an established state because established means we're good to go. We're able to exchange routes and we are working now. All right, let's just go into the next slide. So what is an ASN? Well, it represents a 16-bit or 32-bit value or address that is assigned to an organization or network operator. So what does that actually mean? It's a unique label that is associated to you, your network. And it needs to be unique because if it's the same ASN, then that means it's an IBGP connection that's going to take place and that routes aren't gonna be learned properly. Now, ASNs are assigned by the Regional Internet Registry, or an RIR for short. So there are plenty of them in the world. And this is typically an organization whose job, whose role is exclusively, well, I, I shouldn't say exclusively, but mainly to assign ASNs and public IP addresses to ISPs or to organizations like universities or colleges or bigger type of corporations that need their own public IP address space. Now, IPv4, we know, is pretty much exhausted already. There's actually people with waiting lists, but IPv6, it's still pretty fair game. And you will typically register with a regional internet registry like RIPE, ARIN, AFRINIC, or APNIC, just to name a few. And then they will help you with the process to obtain your own ASN. And then with that ASN, you will actually also be able to get a public IP range or IP ranges from them. It can be IPv4 or IPv6. All right. Now, one point that I've made here is BGP uh, is it has public ASNs, but there is also private ASNs that you can use for yourself. So this is perfect for labbing, or it could be if you're going to do stuff like uh, a CE or customer edge dash provider edge connection. Uh, where you want to have a external BGP connection or eBGP connection, but you, you don't know what to define. So then you can define a private ASN number and you can look up what those ASNs are. I will put in the link for it, uh, but they, they're free to use, but you're not going to use a private ASN to peer on the internet. The only ASNs that you'll use for the internet peering is what you've gotten from an RIR. All right, so let's talk about the BGP peering that you can set up with other ISPs or organizations. Now, this is really useful because you could use this to effectively uh, have a BGP session with, let's say, uh, a cloud provider like Azure or AWS, so that all of the cloud traffic goes through a direct link with that service provider instead of having to go through the internet. Or... It could even be a company like Netflix, you know, those guys do amazing stuff where you could peer with them and all of the streaming or the video traffic can go through a direct link with the BGP peering that you're doing with them so that you don't have to use a lot of your like internet bandwidth to actually get to those services. Now, here is a big point that I want to make, and this goes hand in hand with the ASNs and the private or public IP ranges that we just spoke about, and that is internet exchange points. 
because typically if you want to become an ISP and you've got your ASN and you've got your IP ranges, you're going to need to connect to an internet exchange point and they will connect with BGP to you. So you'll have to connect with them with BGP and this is where you'll give them your ASN and they'll give you their ASN and then you'll connect with them and they're actually going to be connected with some cable system, but then you're advertising all of your public IP ranges to this internet exchange point so that it goes across the whole globe so that the globe and all of the other routers can figure out how to get to you through these people and they'll typically talk to you about something called ip transit which is just so that the ip traffic can pass through their network to get to you but it's it's kind of just how the internet works with internet exchange points asns and our public ip ranges all right so that covers what is an asn now I've got a little cool picture here, and this is just to kind of explain what BGP is doing. Now I've put a bunch of random logos that I've used over uh, on my Canva over the years. So here you can see there's a Fortinet logo, Microtik logo, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, YouTube, Netflix. But what I want you to check is the AS numbers because each of these AS represents their network. So this is just a representation. This isn't what their AS really is. Um, it's also not what their public IP ranges are. Even though I haven't added any public ranges here, I just want to explain what BGP is actually doing. Because whenever you have a BGP peer, it's going to be between two autonomous systems. So AS65010 would connect to AS65200, AS65300, AS65400, because they've got direct links with each other. They're peering with BGP to each other. But these other networks like this Fortinet, Discord, or YouTube, they're not directly connecting with Twitter. So how does any other user know how to get to a network that's not directly connected to that cloud? And that is what BGP is doing because if you're advertising a public prefix, let's say from this top cloud from AS65100, which is 14 then that prefix will get sent across all of the eBGP networks so or peers. They'll all learn about it. And then that prefix, so let's say this YouTube um, network wants to get to this 14 network, it will learn about all of these paths across the whole network so it will it will know if it needs to get to i'm just going to use an example um 100.64.0.1 if it needs to get there because let's say that's at 14 and it's from coming from youtube it's going to know i need to go to as6540 then i need to go to as65400 then as65010 then as65200 and you will actually see the as path on your prefix that you're learning to see how it exactly got to you and that is really cool that is really awesome because it's actually showing you how it went across the internet to get to you so that is a basic breakdown of what bgp is doing and how it's learning the routes and it's it's kind of just working like a gps it's figuring out the best path to get to a specific destination. And let's say if multiple links existed, so let's say between AS65100 and AS65300, another link existed. If one of the links went down, BGP would just be able to redirect that traffic over a different path and then all network communications will just keep taking place. So that is why BGP is so effective um, for internet-based routing. It's really such a powerful protocol. All right. Now, I just want to talk about some of the BGP changes for ROS v7. And this is going to be pretty cool because one of the big changes that Microtech brought in was affinity control. And what that actually means for you is your BGP sessions are no longer bottlenecked by a single CPU core. Because previously on version 6 and below, BGP, the process was ran by a single CPU core. Now your cores can be ran you can have a specific core running your incoming routes, your incoming prefixes, so what you're learning from your partner. And you can also set a different core for your output network, so what you're sending to your partner, so that there is no bottleneck on the CPU. So that's actually a very nice change, and I really like it a lot. We've also got route filters that have been reworked. So this doesn't specifically just affect BGP, but it's going to impact BGP because you do use route filters a lot with BGP. And um, I'm not going to go into a lot of route filter configuration in this video. I'll make a separate video for it. 
but route filters are something that you definitely need to learn how to use when you're going to be working with bgp uh, as a basis just understanding bgp it's not needed but if you're actually going to do stuff like internet peering you want to learn how route filters work one big reason is um, stuff like route hijacking and it's something that happens unintentionally a lot of the times people peer at the internet exchange and then they accidentally advertise a route out that doesn't belong to them and then people that want to get to a specific sub that just can't get to it anymore because you've kind of like tricked the internet to go to you instead of going to the correct place and this happens a lot of the time because of route filters not being properly implemented sometimes it can be malicious but most of the times i think it's been found that it's been purely accidental where somebody didn't put in a filter correctly and now they've caused some issues now another big change is improved performance now i've watched microtech's video on it and they've uh claimed that it does actually work a lot faster because if you are going to learn a full routing table and when they say full routing table they typically mean the internet routing table which is hundreds of thousands of routes then um, previously it used to take quite a while like 10 plus minutes with router os version 7 it's it's like less than a minute to learn a full routing table which is actually quite nice uh, another big change is instances, peers, and networks have been collapsed, so they're gone. They're, they're no longer in the menu when you're in Winbox or you're working on the command line. You don't see instances or peers. Uh, they're just gone. Networks has been completely, I, I don't want to say removed, but when you're working with the networks, you're going to set what we call an output.network, and then there's a separate place in the firewall address list where you specify what networks you're going to be sending out. So before you, you put your network in your BGP and then it just advertised whatever network you put there, that doesn't happen anymore. So that all has now been collapsed into a single tab basically called connections. Now connections is where you'll be con like configuring your peers. And I really like this because you will now be setting what you want to a specific peer or to a group of peers which is very nice. They've also added a new thing called templates. Now templates is like a base package that you can set. And then it's actually just think of it as a replacement for instances, even though it's not because you still set your instance in the actual connection. But with templates, you can set what an instance will be, what routing table it might belong to, um, very basic configuration stuff like, do you want to set um, default originate? then you can do it with a template and that template can be rolled out to a specific connection or to multiple groups of connections. So it's quick and easy to configure so that you don't need to type in your ASN the whole time. It's just there when you select that template. And then they've also added a sessions tab. Now sessions, think of this as the place that shows you if your peer is established or not. So if you don't see anything in the sessions tab, it means the peer hasn't connected at all. And if there is a session, you will see it like with the old peers tab where there's an E. So sessions will show you what's currently connected. It's also supposed to show you which prefixes you're learning, but more on that in a little bit. And there's also a bunch of other configurable options that they've added. And this will actually show you guys when we're in the lab, but they've added stuff like a local role that you can set where you can say is your um bgp session is it going to be running ebgp or is it going to be running ibgp or is it a route reflector what is it actually doing cool and now i want to talk about some <laughs> router os version 7 issues because we must remember there are still some problems marketing still hasn't issued a long-term release yet they are still actively working on improving router os version 7 i don't want to say it's in beta because it's definitely not it's come a long way i think it is actually pretty stable right now even though you know what the joke is like what stable is but it's it's in a pretty good place but there are still current issues and that's as of version 7.2.3 which is what i'm using in my lab um with marketic and one of the things that I can see is there is no easy way for you to view which routes you are advertising out to appear. So it's not what you're receiving, it's what you're sending out to the rest of the network. So if you're just advertising a small bunch of subnets, then it's quite easy to understand what you're going to be sending out. But let's say you're a massive network, you've got maybe thousands of different prefixes that you need to advertise out to a network, you're redistributing some of your networks, then there's no easy way on Marketic to see what you're sending out to your buddies. You're just kind of going to have to figure it out yourself or you're just going to have to ask them, hey, what are you receiving from me? <laughs> uh, 
which is just one of those things currently. There's also a visual GUI bug, so that's on Winbox, that if you go to the sessions tab and you look at your prefix count that you're learning from your peer, that it just shows zero. So you don't see that you're actually learning any peers. You'll only see that if you do, if you go into your IP routes or you do an IP route print where BGP in the command line, then you'll see what BGP routes you're actually learning. Um, one thing I've also found, I'm not sure if it's actually a version six thing as well, but if you're using default originate, so you want to redistribute or distribute a default route out to your peer, but the default route doesn't exist in the routing table, then the peer just won't come up. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if that's, again, a version six thing as well, but I don't recall ever having that issue and I'm pretty sure I've set it up before, but it's one of those things. So make sure there is a default route if you want to use default originate. Uh, BGP VRF does not function properly when using route reflectors on an MPLS network. So that this is a very niche thing because only the bigger type of ISPs will be using this, but it's definitely something that I use a lot and I, I can't actually put version seven in my production network yet because of this, this limiting factor, which, which is kind of sucky, but it's one of those things. So it is what it is. Um, there is also a lack of certain functionality. So things that you could use like BFD in version six, you can't use in version seven yet, which is something I feel like should have already been addressed because version seven has been out for a while now. And some conversions also don't work properly. So if you have a production router running version six and you've got a bunch of different configurations, especially when it relates to uh, pre-pending some stuff uh, in the BGP attributes, then if you convert that to router OS version seven, then there's a good chance your BGP will not work. So if you are going to migrate a router that is running BGP, I actually highly suggest making sure it's not too custom the configuration because then it will probably just work properly. Otherwise you're just gonna have to set up that peer again from scratch and configure everything um, from the beginning, which is, it's not that bad typically if you, if you know exactly what was happening with that peer. But it's, again, another a, a nuisance, so to say. All right. Now, <laughs> the awesome part, we're going to be talking about the topology that we will be working on. Now, this is a mixture or a hybrid topology that I've actually got running on EVE and on my actual VMware, because I've got two routers, namely TMB Lab 01 and TMB Lab 02, which is running as x86s on my VMware hypervisor. And these devices are running router OS version seven. And what we're going to be doing is these devices actually have a direct link, well, a virtual link directly to each other, which they will be using to peer directly between TMB Lab 01 and TMB Lab 02. And then TMB Lab 03 will be peering with TMB Lab 01 exclusively. So we'll have three different uh, BGP connections. TMB Lab 03 will also be running router S version six, and this is actually going to be on my EVE topology. The addresses on ether one, even though that those are private addresses, these are the WAN addresses. So this is how they can get to the internet and potentially also to each other if they need to on a public address. I, I use hyphens there. And the subnets that you see at the bottom is going to be their subnets that I've added onto a bridge that we're going to be advertising using BGP. And then obviously the AS is the ASN for each different network. And that's it. So it's it should be a short, well, it, hopefully not too short, but we'll be doing the lab portion now. And I'm going to be doing this from my Linux machine. So we're going to be switching screens again and let's have fun again. Feel free to go through the logic side, but this is now going to be the lab side where we're physically going to be doing the things and setting it up. This is just to give you a virtual representation. I wanted to put this as a small image in the right hand corner of the screen, but it actually messes things up. I've tested it out already. So if you feel like it, please just take a screenshot, put it on a different monitor or revert back to the screenshot if you see where I'm currently working. But in the end, we'll be able to see all of these private subnets, that we're, but they could have been public subnets as well that we're just advertising to each other using BGP. All right, so let's get into the lab portion. All righty, so we're back in business and we're going to do the lab or hands-on portion now. 
And first thing I want to do is actually connect onto TNB Lab 01 because that was the middle router that's actually going to be having two different BGP sessions so it can actually advertise them out. So let's connect onto it. And then let's just navigate to Inbox. I'll just maximize my screen quickly. And now if we want to access BGP, we will just go to the routing submenu and we'll go to BGP. And now here we can do the configuration. Now, as I said earlier, they've collapsed some of the stuff. So connection is a new thing. Templates is new. They've gotten rid of instances, peers, and networks. So all of this stuff actually happens in the connection tab. But before we do anything with connections, I want to go into templates and just explain this again. Because with templates, think of this as a package that you can push to connections that you can quickly set very specific values. So if I click on this plus, you can give the template a name and some people just opt to make that their AS number, but you can call this my networks or whatever you want. It's perfectly fine. You can give it any string. Our AS, so I could make that 65000. You can get stuff like the address families that you want to set. Is it only going to connect on IP? Is it going to be IPv6? Is it L2 VPN? Is it VPN v4? Uh, all that stuff, but I'm not going to add anything there. And you can set stuff like a router ID. So what's your router ID going to be for all your connections? And you can set some extra stuff. But what you find here is also in the connections tab. This is just like a, a package. So I'll show you. Let me just cancel. So if we go to the connection, I click on the plus. If you click on the template here, whatever template you've defined will then fill in this information in the BGP connection. So it's just a quick way to actually roll out basic configuration to a connection or a group of connections. That's why templates are actually quite nice. But I'm just going to do this as a per peer thing. So I'm just going to set up the connections myself because it also helps us see exactly what's happening with the setup. All right, so we can give this BGP connection a name. I will call this 2TMBLab02. And now I can set my AS. So my AS was 65000. I'm not going to do anything with the AFI. I'll leave that blank. Router ID, you can set it, but I'll leave it blank. Actually, let, let's set it. Let's make it 192.0.0.1. I think actually that's what I've set it on this router as a loopback address. Now, remote address. So this is for me important because Microtech says you can actually set a remote address as an IP range, and then BGP will try and form connections in that whole IP range. But I'm going to just specify my addresses as slash 32s. So I want to connect to 192, 168, 149, 153. So that is um, actually, <laughs> that's the wrong address, because I want to connect over the direct link that I have to uh, lab 02, which is 172.31.255.10. So that is actually an IP address between my Microtex. If I look at my IP neighbors, we can see that's on my Ether2. So that was that direct link I was mentioning when I was talking about the topology. And we can see I can ping that. So that's perfect. And now we need to set our remote AS. Now, Microtech also says you can leave the remote AS blank and it can check from the open messages what the actual um, AS is, but I'm still going to define this because I feel it's very good to be as very specific as you can when it comes to BGP. So I'm going to set mine to 65100. Now we know what AS I'm connecting to. We know what my remote address is, what my router ID is, what my AS is. Another important thing that we need to set is our local role. Now the local role defines what the BGP will be doing. Is it going to be IBGP, which means we're connecting in the same AS, or is it going to be eBGP? We're connecting to a different autonomous system number. So in our case, it's going to be eBGP. All of these other values, you'll only use them in very specific use cases. So you can go read about it. I will put a, a description or a link to what they are as well. Marketic added this as part of a standardization thing because you can do this with other vendors as well. But here we'll just set eBGP. Because what marketing did before is it, it automatically told you if it's eBGP or iBGP. You, you didn't even know. It just did it. And what Microtik also does is if you convert from version 6 to version 7, it's actually got this connect and listen uh, things enabled just so that the router can connect using BGP, which means it will actively try and connect to other peers. 
and then listen obviously means it is listening for any bgp connections to come in so i'm just going to enable them as well and then i will click on apply now i've added my bgp peer and there's more stuff I actually want to do, but before we do any additional stuff, I want to get the peer up on TMB Lab 02 as well, so that we've actually got a session, because right now there's no session, so no magic is happening yet. So let's make some magic happen. So let's create a new Winbox session. Let me just minimize the old one, and let me connect to TMB Lab 02. And then I'll connect. And now in TMB Lab 02, let's also just zoom in. And then what I'm going to do is also just navigate to the BGP. I'll click on the connection and we can give this again the name. So I'll just make it to TMB Lab 01. And my AS is 6510000, apologies. <laughs> and my router ID, I'm going to make 192.0.0.2. Or we can make it my WAN address, 192.168. Um, 149.153 and now let's connect to the remote address so my remote address is going to be what my link is to TMB Labo 1 which is going to be 172.31.255.1 so let me just add that 172 sorry I've got the memory of a goldfish apparently because I, I forgot 31.255.1 31.255.1 and now we've got our remote AS, which is going to be 65000. And again, important, we need to set our role. So I'm going to make this eBGP and let's just set it for connect and listen. And then I'm going to click on apply, hit OK. And now we should actually be able to see a session come up. So let's go to our sessions. And there we can see there is a session. It's been established. We can see it is up, how long it's been up, how many update messages it's sent and received. And this is great. This is groovy. This means the BGP is up and running, but it's not doing anything yet because if I go into my IP routes, I'm not learning any routes yet. So let's make that happen. Let's actually advertise some routes out. So let's navigate back to TMB Lab 01 because I just want to start from there. There's TMB Lab 01. And to advertise specific prefixes out what we can do is go into the connections and then if we go into our filters in the filter you get an output network now output network is actually going to be the networks that you're sending out so remember there was this network tabs here it's basically just moved into here but this is like an address list that you need to specify which networks you want to send out so i can just call this BGP, uh, or let's call it my BGP dash out and apply that. But how do we actually say what subnets we want to send out? So what you do is you can go into your IP firewall and then in the IP firewall, you will actually go into your address list. And then in the address list, you can now specify the prefixes that you want to send out with that name so my bgp out so let's just see which prefixes we want to send out quickly so let me look at my routes i actually want to advertise all of the routes out on allo one so i want to advertise out 100.64.100.0/23 so let's add that in the address list so the name is going to be my dash bgp dash out First address 100.64.100.0/23. All right, then we want 172.16.55.0/24. So I'm just copying this because it's going to be a little bit quicker. And then I can select my BGP out, paste that prefix that I want to advertise, and then the last one was 192.168.100.0/24. So let's uh, add another one. apply all right <laughs> so let's see if i go into my routing and my bgp i can't actually see what i'm sending out from here so let's go and log on to the second router and let's look at its routes and ta-da! we are actually receiving some routes via bgp now because we can see 
they're dynamic, active, and it's from BGP that we receive the routes. And we can see there is three of them. Now, I just want to show you on the sessions tab, the bug I was referring to, if you navigate to the far right, there's a prefix count. It doesn't show us any prefixes, even though we can see we've received three prefixes. All right, so let's do the same thing on router two because we, or labo two, because we're not advertising any routes out from it yet. So I also just want to go into its routing table and then I want to see there should be an LO1. So these ranges in LO1, I want to advertise out using BGP. So let's just copy this first range. And similarly, we're going to go into our BGP connection. We're going to go to the filter and then output network, my BGP out. And that name can be anything. And then we just go into our IP firewall, into our address list. And now we need to specify my-bgp-out. Apply that. And this I'll just copy quickly. And then look at my routes. And then grab this other route. And paste it in here and apply. So now if I go on to TMB Labo 1, I should actually see that I'm receiving three, two prefixes. And I can verify that I am because I can see them there. Now, the cool thing is if I go into the command line quickly, I can actually do a IP route print where BGP, and it will show me all of the BGP routes that I've received. And I can quickly test and see if it's actually working by doing a ping to them. So let's see, can I ping 164.2.1? And that I can see, I can get to, and that is a network that exists on the other router. Can I ping 192.168.88.1, which is kind of the default address on Microtix when you boot them up for the first time, but that I can get to as well. So I'm quite happy with this. So we are learning those routes. And similarly on TMB Labo 2, if I do an IP route print, uh, where BGP, we can see which BGP routes we're learning there, and this looks fantastic. So we are learning the prefixes correctly, and we're able to ping across the network. So ah, no, that's actually really good. So we've got the BGP working between two router OS version 7 routers. Let's quickly get it running between a version 6 and version 7 router. And really, there is no change in the setup on the version 7 device. It's actually going to be uh, pretty much the same. So let me get on TMB Labo 1. And let me get into my routing BGP. We're going to add a new connection. I'm going to call this 2TMBLab03. My AS remains the same. My router ID also remains the same. My remote address, it's going to be 192.168.149.152 because I'm doing this over the WAN. And my remote AS is going to be 65200. And this will also be an eBGP connection. I'm also just going to set, listen and connect. And now from the beginning, I'm also just going to define my BGP out networks. I'm going to apply this. And that's been added. And I also just want to show you guys the configuration quickly from the command line. So let's go routing BGP export because the setup is actually very standard and straightforward when you do it via the command line. You do a routing BGP connection, you can add, and then you can specify an AS, connect, listen. Your local dot role is very important. You'll see if it's highlighted like that, it's, it's very important. Output dot network, this is just what we're sending out. Our remote address is what we're connecting to. Our AS, but well, that, that's the remote dot as so don't let that confuse you but that's what we're connecting to and there's our router id and the routing table all right anyways back to configuring the version 6 device so i'm just going to connect to another winbox session and let's connect to tmb lab 03 and this doesn't have a password so this is a, not a secure router but that's okay and there we go, we're on the TMB Lab 03. And this is a version 6 device, pretty stock standard. So here we're also just going to go into a routing BGP. But now we need to define an instance. So our instance is AS65200. 
the AS number is going to be the same. Our router ID, I'm going to make my WAN address in this case, 149.152. And I don't want to set anything else here yet, but it is important to know about redistribute, but we'll talk about them in a seki. But redistribute, it's awesome stuff. So let's apply this. So now we have an instance. And now with this instance, we need to also just connect to a peer. So I'm going to add a peer and my peer is going to be 2TMB lab 01. Now I need to select my instance. I need to specify my remote address, which is 192.168.149.151. My remote AS is going to be 65000. And I'm not going to change any of the hold timers or TTL anything. So this looks correct to me. So let's apply. Actually, let's just check advanced and there's nothing weird there. So let's just apply. All right. So we see it went from idle to established. Remember the states I was talking to? That's how quick it should be. It, it should literally be very fast. And here you can see we're actually receiving five prefixes from our peer which is uh, very interesting. Now, if I look at my routing table, we can see I'm actually receiving a ton of different prefixes. I'm receiving 164, 100, 0, 23, 164, 200, 0, 28. But this is because of the eBGP. So I'm learning all of the BGP routes. Um, but let's advertise out our network. So instead of doing the whole firewall bit, uh, we just need to add the network here. And here I see I've already added a network, but it's literally just a case of clicking on the plus and specifying what your network is. So let's just see what my Allo network is. And we are just going to add the network here, click on apply. And now this version six device is advertising out this 192.168.123.0.24 subnet to the rest of the network. So if I look here on my peers, Again, there's the sessions tab is kind of its own thing on version seven. So let's see on my terminal, if I do an IP route print where BGP, we can see all of the BGP routes we're learning. And this is awesome. Um, print detail where BGP. I love doing detailed prints like this. And this is information you can get from Winbox as well. Uh, but it will effectively also tell you what the BGP AS path is. Remember those paths we were talking about? This is where they come into effect. Because here we can see if we're going to 100.64.100.0.23, we're just going to one hop, one path. But if we go to a different um, subnet like 192.168.88.0.24, here we can see it took two hops, two paths to get to that network. So that is the gist of BGP, that path vector uh, kicking into effect. So let's just look at this from the routing table here. So if I double click on the route and you look at the attributes, now you can see what the AS path is that it took. And you can see so much information and BGP is really, really the king slash queen protocol of anything. I love all the stuff you can do with it. You can tweak so much with these attributes to make things work. You get stuff called BGP communities that slams certain stuff onto prefixes. It's really fascinating. And I'm looking forward to adding more videos on BGP. This is just so that I could show you how to configure BGP on RouterOS version 7 between two RouterOS version 7 devices, as well as from a RouterOS version 6 router to RouterOS version 7. And I think we've achieved our hands-on goal. We've got the BGP session running between like all the devices that needs to be running. If I look at my TMB Lab 01, this is the central router. If I look at my route print where BGP, I can see all of the routes that I need to see here. And if I look at my routing BGP session, I can see I've got my two sessions. I can see what their uptime is. I can see all of the information that I need to, which is awesome. And again, you can see this information from Winbox by just going to the sessions tab and it will show you everything that I'm just seeing from the CLI as well. All right, so this is going to be where I wrap up this video. Um, in future videos, we will be tweaking more stuff in BGP. I just wanted to get you familiar with it and we've done it. So uh, I hope it's been informative. 
I'd like to thank you for watching. I'd like to thank all of my supporters on YouTube, on Patreon. You guys, as members, you helped me so much. I really appreciate it a lot. And if you guys don't mind, again, leaving a comment, sharing the video, it really helps out. I'm really trying to get all of this information out to as many people as possible because I feel like this can really help a lot of players. So, <laughs> so thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next video hopefully soon. Enjoy. Bye.